Hi you guys, Andrea here and I am going to be showing you another week of meals that I am going to be preparing today. Um, it's Labor Day weekend. I hope you all have had a nice relaxing weekend. We had a wedding that we went to yesterday. It was a very small crowd, but it was really beautiful out. Well, after it stopped raining for during the ceremony, it ended up being really beautiful and we had a good time and I have my day after wedding bun thrown up in my hair and no makeup on, but that's okay. We're going to get this done. Uh, let me just show you real quick. This is our meal plan for the week. If this is your first time watching, this is a trucker household. My husband is a trucker and it, sometimes he's home throughout the week and sometimes he's gone the whole week so I usually prep everything I can or as much as I can on the weekend that way he can grab a week worth of food to take on the truck with him because it's really hard when you're a truck driver to be able to stick to any type of diet uh, let alone a low carb diet without constantly just getting real junky kind of food so it really helps them stick to it on the road um, so for breakfast options, we're just going to stick to bulletproof coffee and I'm going to make some more blueberry muffins that I made in the meal plan last week. So if you're looking for a delicious low carb keto blueberry muffin recipe, go back and check out that meal plan. Um, I found that last week we had a lot of leftover food. Luckily all the chili that I made, uh, in the individual containers I had froze them and just taken out a couple for last week so we still have I think four or five of those in the freezer right now so that's gonna help save me time for this week because honestly your girl is tired your girl is tired today um, for lunch dinner options I'm going to have fixings ready to go for turkey bacon ranch wraps or using the Aldi zero carb bread we can make turkey bacon ranch sandwiches which are really good and really easy to put together I'm going to be trying a few recipes that I haven't tried before from the southern keto cookbook one of those is a cheesy broccoli ground beef casserole looks really good so I'm hoping that's a winner um, I'm optimistic because everything I've made from this Southern Keto cookbook has been really good. Again, for lunch dinner options, the leftover chili. Uh, for snacks from the Southern Keto cookbook, I'm making sausage balls. I still have some jalapenos that I had cleaned out from last week that I'm going to use again to make some more jalapeno poppers. If you didn't see the video last week, Check this link up above if you want a really tasty jalapeno popper recipe. Um, and then again from the Southern Keto Cookbook, we're going to be making these cucumber sandwiches. So we'll see. For sweets options, because it's better to have some options so you don't go out and buy that Snickers. Or so I don't go out and buy that Snickers. I'm going to be making peanut butter balls from the Southern Keto Cookbook. We have made this before. They are delicious. They are fat bombs. If you're looking for a really good fat bomb recipe. And yes, those are on point. And then we have some sugar-free jello cups that we picked up at BJ's Wholesale. And we'll have those with whipped cream on hand to satisfy that craving if we get one. So let me get this camera turned around. I'm going to start prepping several things that I need for all the things that I'm doing today. So I'll just take you through that with me really quick. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is start getting my ground beef browned for the cheesy broccoli casserole thingy. So I just have this pan on medium high and it's not hot yet, but that's okay. I'm going to put this in anyways. And the recipe calls for uh, one and a half pounds 
this is probably about two pounds right here so I'm going to take some of it out and reserve it in the freezer for a future recipe Okay, so I need to get a yellow onion chopped up, a red onion sliced up, and some garlic minced. My wonderful trucker has already pre-cooked some bacon for us that we're going to need throughout the week. So thank you, hubby, for helping. And I'm just going to get all this done very quickly. I just want to show you real quick that I've started to brown up some ground beef in the skillet. There's about two pounds. The recipe I'm using for the cheesy broccoli casserole only calls for one and a half. So I'm going to take the other remaining ground beef that's going to be pre-cooked and just pop that in the freezer so it's ready to use for another meal we may make. Okay, the next thing I'm going to start working on is the sausage balls. So for that, it calls for one pound of breakfast sausage, which I have right here. I'm using Bob Evans. I, I tend to like Bob Evans because it's not uh, real greasy. So I'm just going to get this in here. And then the other ingredients, which there aren't many ingredients to this, which is always nice, um, is going to be some shredded cheddar, some finely sifted almond flour, and some baking powder. And then we're just going to mix it all up with our hands as if we were making uh, meatballs, which essentially we're doing with sausage. If you're interested in trying this recipe out for yourself, this is from the Southern Keto Cookbook, and I will link that down below. I, I don't like to give measurements when I'm using a recipe from somebody else's cookbook. I feel like they're the ones who did the work for that recipe, and I don't want to just give that away as if it was my own. And you don't want to overwork this. You want to get it combined well but just like with meatloaf um, if you overwork it it will get tougher so at the point when it just comes together and you don't see you know any pockets of almond flour or pockets of cheese down there then we'll stop Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, and see, there's nothing left in the bowl that's loose. So at this point, I'm going to line a pan with parch parchment paper and then start making the balls. So they're going to kind of be like bite-sized appetizer size balls. All right, I'm going to pop these into a 375 degree oven for 20, 20, 20 to 25 minutes and I will show you what they look like when they come out. Our ground beef is getting there, but this batch had a lot of grease in it. So I'm going to strain that before I add my onion and my garlic. And now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add the onion. And the garlic. I'm just going to let that keep going until the onions get translucent. And then I'm going to start working on the cheese sauce that will go into this. Okay, so for this cheesy cream sauce, it calls for some grated Parmesan cheese. And I have the skillet on medium, and all these ingredients can just go in at the same time. Um, it calls for mozzarella. And if you want all the details for this recipe, that is in the Southern Keto cookbook. So I will be linking that down below. This is just heavy whipping cream. Some fresh grated black pepper. And essentially this is making an Alfredo sauce. So you could make this sauce on its own and put it on cauliflower, on broccoli on its own, you know, however many ways you can think of using Alfredo sauce. It would be good on top of zucchini noodles as well or shredded zucchini. And we need an eight ounce package of cream cheese. You don't have to worry about softening, softening this. And then the recipe does suggest if you want, you can use some red pepper flakes, which I am going to use. So I'm just going to get some and throw that in there. Okay, so while that warms up and starts melting, I'm going to get our broccoli going. The recipe calls for frozen broccoli, but since I have a lot of fresh broccoli on hand, I'm going to use fresh. So I like to just check and make sure that the ends aren't getting browned. And I do like to cut off the very end. And you know, this one here is a smaller size floret, so I'm going to leave that as is. But some of these bigger ones, and see this one, I don't know if you can tell, has a little bit of browning going on, so I'm just going to cut that part off. And for the bigger ones, I'm just going to break them down a little bit into smaller pieces. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, so I have uh, our casserole dish here. This is a 9 by 13 casserole dish. And I'm just going to spray it a little bit. You don't have to, but I like to spray it just to make sure things aren't sticking. And our cheese sauce, the, the heavy cream in here is starting to bubble a little bit. And as you can see, it's starting to melt. So I'm just going to continue to let that go. And let me show you real quick. Our sausage balls have come out of the oven. And they do look really, really good. So I'm going to have to try one. And they have cooled down. <laughs> mm. Those are really good. Wow. Yeah, I really like that. The, cre the cheese got nice and crispy around the edges. It's really tasty. Definitely try that recipe out. So I'm going to have to cut in. As I was editing, I realized that somehow a whole section of this broccoli casserole did not get recorded. And that was the part where I combined the cheese sauce with the broccoli and the beef and put it into the oven. So I am so sorry, you guys. But here is what it looks like after it comes out of the oven. So our cheesy broccoli beef casserole has cooled. That's what it looks like. Each of these containers would be two to three servings, depending how hungry we are. And so we'll each take one of these for the week. And I'm just going to sprinkle a little extra grated Parmesan on here because, well, because I can. Adds a little more saltiness to it. And I'm going to turn this camera around because the trucker and I are going to try this out together for the first time and let you know what we think. Okay, so we're both gonna give this a try since it is our first time um, making this particular recipe from the Southern Keto Cookbook. I think it's cold, I don't know. All right, okay, here we go. Oh, that's good. Mmm. It's really creamy. The broccoli's gotten nice and tender. That's delicious. It's definitely so good. If you're looking for just a different low carb recipe to try and you're a broccoli fan like we are, I definitely recommend checking this recipe out. Winner! Thanks, Southern Keto Cookbook. <laughs> 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 okay, the next thing that I'm going to show you are the turkey bacon ranch wraps that we make. This is something you don't want to make ahead of time. I'll take a container with several sections and I'll put all the components separately. That way it can be made fresh, you know, whenever we're wanting it. Otherwise, it tends to get mushy. So definitely not something you want to make today and try to eat two days from now. So... This is super easy. Um, you can probably find these La, Band La Bandarita carb counter tortillas at most of the major grocery stores. These are four net carbs. Or if you are fortunate to have an Aldi near you, Aldi also carries their own low carb tortillas, which are also four net carbs. So that is really awesome. I have some turkey breast that I bought from the deli. This particular kind is our favorite. It's Dietz and Watson um, home style turkey breast. It's so good. And then I just have some Swiss cheese, some of the onion that I sliced up earlier, some lettuce, some of the bacon that Matt made earlier, and just whatever kind of ranch dressing you want to use. And this is how this goes. I mean, it's really easy. Just going to lay down some of my lettuce. 
I like to put the ranch on top of the lettuce so it doesn't soak through. And just put some onion. I love red onion on sal or sandwiches and salads. I don't know about you, they just have that sweeter taste. So that's what we like to use. And then just take a couple slices of this turkey. Um, you always want to be careful when you're buying lunch meat or deli meat that you're not getting like a honey turkey or a maple, anything sweetened because that's going to add carbs to it. This particular turkey um, only has one carb. So, and that is the serving size is two ounces, which ends up being a few slices worth. And then I'm just going to put down some fish cheese. And then sometimes I'll put tomato on it. I have a lot of cherry tomatoes coming from the garden right now, so I don't want them to go to waste. And then you're just gonna put some bacon. And that's basically it. It's really easy. Now Arby's has a turkey bacon ranch wrap, and I can probably bet that theirs has a lot more carbs, so why not just make something like this yourself? That way you know exactly what's going into it. And that's what it looks like. Yum. And there you go, turkey bacon ranch wrap. So the last thing that I am doing for this week of meal prep is something for a dessert, a sweet treat. We have had these before, I've made them many times, and they are definitely very, very delicious. If you like peanut butter, you want to try these out. <clears throat> so you're going to need a hand mixer for this. And we're just going to get peanut butter. I'm using a chunky kind of peanut butter. I think it gives the, the balls a little more texture, but you can use creamy, you can use natural, you can use whatever kind of peanut butter you want. Just get that in there. And then you wanna use a block of cream cheese. I have two halves of cream cheese that I need to use up, so rather than open a new one, let me Get rid of these. And then you just want to cream these two things together. That's about fine because we're going to be adding powdered sugar into here as well so it'll get mixed up even further but that's what we're going for we want to start getting the pockets of cream cheese out of there you know everything blended now this is I call keto powdered sugar but um I get it from Amazon in this huge bag this is a two pound bag of a confectioner is erythritol and it is so good it it allows you to make buttercream and you know just so many different desserts or that you thought you couldn't make I, I I absolutely love it now you can find swerve brand in the regular stores these days but I think this one from Amazon is so much more economical the only thing is sometimes with these sweetener products see how it, it's like got a crunchy lump in here but I'm not gonna worry about it too much because the blender is going to take care of that for me if that happens to you you might just want to sift this 
<clears throat> or sift the powdered sugar when you use it and then you know just press the lumps through the sifter but this will work and I'm in a hurry because I'm wanting something sweet <laughs> Okay, so this is all nicely whipped and nice and fluffy. And the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to form these into balls. So I'm going to put some gloves on for this. So, and honestly, you can make these as big or as small as you want. But this is kind of loose at this point. So you're not going to be able to form like perfectly round hard balls. You could stick the whole mix into the refrigerator and let it cool off a little bit, but I'm fine with doing it this way. I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just looking for something to satisfy my sweet tooth. And once I have all my balls formed, I'm going to pop this into the refrigerator for I like to put it in there for at least an hour because you do want them nice and cold before you drizzle the chocolate that we are going to be using over the top. So I will keep going, pop them in the fridge, and I will show you how we drizzle the chocolate on. Okay, so our balls have come out of the refrigerator and they're a lot firmer than they were when we put them in. And now I'm going to drizzle some of this lint 90% cocoa chocolate that I've melted. You want to look for chocolate that has the highest percent of cocoa because that's going to have the least amount of sugar. I know a lot of people like dark chocolate just as it is. I personally am not a fan of it, but because these peanut butter balls are so sweet, they really are a perfect complement to them. So I have some of that chocolate that I've melted here. I have two squares, and these are what the squares of the lint bars look like. They're pretty big squares. Um, I'm just gonna take my spoon and put a little on the spoon and then just drizzle it all over. So these are all done and now I'm just going to store them in the refrigerator. Um, I wouldn't, I think they're good for up to five days in the refrigerator. I doubt they will last that long, but definitely you want to give these babies a try. So as I'm sitting here editing, once again, I find that at the end of my video, I'm not sure what happened. I, I guess I was having some technical difficulties, but at the end, I did have a section where I tasted the peanut butter balls and that's just not going to make it on there because for some reason it filmed sideways so anyways they were really really delicious and they're probably already half gone um, Matt took some of them to work with him but anyhow you guys I hope you enjoyed this video I apologize for the weirdness sometimes but this is my real life. This is me. I am not a professional in any way, shape, or form when it comes to YouTubing and editing and all that. So, this is what you get. The real me. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please definitely hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. I would love to have you come back again. And until next time, stay safe and be blessed. Bye. Bye.